Aortic stenosis is when the aortic valve cannot open fully, leading to an interference with the normal blood flow out of the heart. Without treatment, severe aortic stenosis can cause heart failure and may eventually be fatal. Edward Life Sciences offers a solution through valves that are used in transcatheter aortic valve implantation, TAVI, a minimally invasive procedure allowing efficient treatment and fast recovery. Okay. You're observing the cutting edge of cardiology. This is one of the UK's elite specialist heart centres. Ready for the valve. We've been granted exclusive access to witness one of their advanced medical procedures. So right now in this laboratory, this patient is about to undergo a procedure which could transform his life. They're about to insert a small valve through his leg all the way up to his heart. The procedure is called TAVI, which stands for Transcatheter Aortic Valve Implantation. It's an alternative to open heart surgery and it's far less invasive, which means that patient's recovery time is considerably shorter. Some patients undergo the procedure after being diagnosed with severe aortic stenosis. So aortic stenosis is a common degenerative condition of one of the major heart valves. And as one gets older or with time or with an abnormal valve, uh, the valve can become calcified and stenosed and narrowed. And if left untreated, that condition can progress really fairly rapidly to cause the pump or the heart to fail and is associated with a risk of death. Aortic stenosis sufferers experience breathlessness and increasingly find it difficult to exercise and complete normal tasks. If the disease reaches the severe stage and is untreated, the life expectancy for sufferers can be as little as two years following diagnosis. Patients may require urgent treatment. Today, consultant cardiologist Mick Oscor is leading his team to complete this procedure. In this procedure, they're fully awake and they have it minimally invasive via a little uh, incision into the groin. And via that, we managed to push their valve to the sides and put a brand new valve in. Hello, Doctor. Hello, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Good. The rest is looking okay. Shortly after his procedure this morning, patient Barry Sylvester from North London was able to talk to Mick. Absolutely, yeah. Well, really I'm just well. grateful for what you guys did. So, yeah, thank you very much. I was more concerned about having to have open heart surgery for it as opposed to TAVI when they explained the differences in the risks. So I chose to have TAVI, which I thought was more suited to me as well. And it all went well. So. The valve used in Barry's procedure was manufactured by Edwards Life Sciences. At a time when NHS waiting lists for cardiac surgery have increased substantially, having a treatment option with shorter recovery time, as well as a reduced length of stay in hospital, is welcomed. If you uh, focus more on doing a procedure like this, where you spend less time in hospital, you could do more of those procedures. On an average day, we do four of these procedures. We could do, in the same time frame, five or maybe six in a day. Um, and by doing this, we then open up the ability for the operations to do different operations to reduce that waiting list. Four years ago, Anne Metcalf was suffering from aortic stenosis. She didn't want to have open heart surgery. The TAVI procedure offered an opportunity she was keen to take. So immediately, as soon as the valve went in, yeah. you felt better straight away? I did. I can't explain it to you. I, it's almost like being reborn. I, I know that sounds sort of a bit Hollywood and all of that, but it did. I knew then that I was better. I didn't know I was really ill before, but when the valve went in, I knew that I was better. Anne remains in good health following her procedure. Dr John Byrne says many other patients could benefit from TAVI, but are unable to do so. 
huge amount of work to do. There's a huge amount of unmet need. And just to put that in perspective, the estimates put about 200,000 people in the UK who have significant valvular heart disease estimated. We treat a tiny proportion of those every year, probably under 2,000 as a nation. So that's, these are small numbers, and we are really going to have to double or triple that provision over the next three to five years if we're going to deliver the care that these patients need. For now, Anne has some advice for other patients. Don't self-medicate. Don't think to yourself, oh, I've got this. Don't Google. Don't Google your symptoms. Go to those who know. 